that song's got a it's got a message in it. Amen. Thank you. If you have your Bible, turn to Second Corinthians chapter number three. Second Corinthians chapter three. Verse number six. Second Corinthians three six. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Note carefully the next verse. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Father, bless your holy word now. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. The Apostle Paul respected, reverenced, and loved the law of God. Everyone who's ever been born again will also love the law of God. But they will have the discernment to know that it cannot save you. It never saved anyone. The Old Testament says the just shall live by his faith and trust God. But the Apostle Paul here wants to point out something that's very important to us. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. That's very important to understand the concept tonight. There's an awful lot of people who do who who uh, who are very eloquent when it comes to uh, dealing with all the do's and the don'ts. And no doubt there are do's and there are don'ts. You'll never get a man saved by do's and don'ts. And do's and don'ts will never make you spiritual. You're putting the cart before the horse. First, regenerate the man. First, change the life. Change the heart. And you don't have to tell him about the do's and the don'ts. For the evident witness of the Spirit of God will lead you in the right... I cannot believe tonight there are a thousand different ways for Christians to go. There's only one Holy Spirit. And if you, are, if you believe in separation, and I do tonight, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to separate you then you're going to believe that when the Holy Spirit moves into your life, He's going to change your do's and your don'ts. He's going to change your wants. He's going to change your heart. We live in a generation today who is adamantly opposed to repentance. And they believe that repentance is a work. Let me tell you something tonight. Watch that cult. Watch them. Because these people are easy believism. One, two, three... Quote a sinner's prayer and everything is okay. It's not what you believe with your mind that saves you. It's what comes out of your heart that saves you. They try to define repentance as metanoia, as the Greek word, which simply means a change of mind to these people. Repentance is far more than a change of mind. Repentance is a change of the heart. And if the heart doesn't change, it's obvious that you didn't repent, that you really didn't believe. That you accepted something intellectually, but you didn't grasp it from your heart. And this is why it's so important to understand. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. We absolutely must operate in the Spirit of God. We can't do anything without the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when we try to drag up our commands and our laws and all of the rest of that, all in the world you're going to do is grieve the Holy Spirit. For nothing is wrought by the power of ability and will. It can only be wrought by the power of the Spirit. Not by power nor by might, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. This is why in Acts chapter number 2, when he sent the Holy Ghost, he sent the Holy Ghost to anoint them. Cloven tongues like as a fire. They came under fire and they came under unction. And the Holy Spirit empowered them. He came down upon them. But you talk to people today and they say, well, you know, I mean, I understand that. Uh, Pentecost 2,000 years ago, that's all. And they get, it, they get it into theology 101 and it never gets out of there. 
It's all an abstract argument about, well, this, 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 this. Folks, that kind of thing's not going to help you. What's in your heart? And here's what the issue that Paul's dealing with here. And that's this. He says, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. We need tonight, of all things, to be humble and to be earnest and be desirous of the Holy Ghost moving in our heart. One man said not too long ago, well, we all have a problem with pride and brushed it aside. Yeah, that's our problem. Yeah, be my be my yeah. yeah, that's our problem. Yes. Over there in Isaiah, when it says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I yeah. will be like the Most High. Have you read in there where it says, thou hast said in thine heart? Yeah. He didn't say it audibly. Satan simply had it in his heart. You mean God can read your heart? <laughs> yeah, he can. He knows your motive whether you do or not. The Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the mind. What's it say? Heart. Why heart? Because God doesn't play games with us. He goes right to the issue. It's hard. The Lord Jesus Christ did everything he did in this world by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Everything he did. He was the perfect man. He was the man that Adam was not. This is why he's called the last Adam. The first Adam failed. The last Adam did not fail. The first man failed. The second man did not fail. The first man lost the image of God. The second man restored the image of God. It's a big deal. And we must tonight understand that if we don't have the, the power of the Spirit of God here, folks, it's meaningless. I mean, you're just, you know, what you're doing is dead works and beating the air, as the Apostle Paul said, just beating the air. And, and there's nothing, there's no fruit to it. And I want to see fruit, don't you? Yes. I really do. I'd like to see fruit. I heard a man say the other day, some young fellow who's been going to school somewhere, he said he went to this Catholic convent, this Catholic school, parochial school. He said he talked to the priest and asked if the priest would let him come in and speak to the kids that were in class. And the priest said, why, sure, come on in. And so he came in there. He went into that class. About 25 kids or so in there. And he walked in there. And by the time he walked out, all 25 of them were saved. You believe that? I've got a bridge to sell you. You'll never get saved till you're ready. And you'll never get right with God till you're ready. Somebody's got to sow. Somebody's got to break up the fallow ground. Somebody's got to sow the seed and somebody's got to come behind and water the seed. And then God gives the increase. That it's the height of arrogance and presumption to think that you have it in your power to convert a soul. You can't convert anybody. We don't have that power. God didn't give man that power. That power is in the hands of God alone. So what's he doing? He's bragging about numbers. He made sure they understood how many numbers were involved in, this, in the ones that got saved. You know, quote unquote got saved. It's all about the numbers racket. Have you ever been to a service where it's all about the numbers? All about the numbers. Why shouldn't it be about souls? Why, should, why, why does it matter how many numbers you have? Why, why should, why should, it shouldn't matter that the seed has been sown. The ground has been prepared. They've received the word of God. They may not walk the aisle that night. You may give an altar call for four days. If they're not ready... They're not ready. When they are ready, you don't have to beg them. They'll seek you out. I remember when I first came to Temple 42 years ago, I met a named Claude, man named Claude Bond. How many ever heard of Claude Bond? None of you have. Claude Bond was a very successful businessman. Very successful. But he got saved. He got saved. And Claude Bond, I had some beanie weenies right before I came over here tonight. And every time I eat beanie weenies, I think of Claude Bond. <laughs> I still do. 
Here's why. Claude Bond would get some men together and they'd load up on beanie weenies and they'd go to South America and they'd go out in the woods and they'd go up into the mountains and they'd carry the word of God into the villages and they'd witness to those people and then they'd come back to the states and then they'd go back and they'd do it again. And they go back and they do it again. And they go back and they do it again. I have never seen anybody in all the years I've been here that had a greater burden for souls than Claude Bond. But he did not believe in easy believism. He wanted a real conversion. He wanted a genuine conversion. Amen. Tommy Tillman. How many ever heard of him? Same kind of man. Tommy Tillman is a humble man. Very humble. A humble man has the power of God on him. Claude Bond was a humble man. Like I say a moment ago, how many of you have ever heard of Claude Bond? None of you. You'll hear about him at the judgment seat of Christ. So you need to understand that we got a bunch of Christian celebrities today. Yeah, we do. We've got Christian celebrities today, but I'm an old dog. I've been at this a long time. I've known an awful lot of good people for decades, and you've never heard of them, but I know them. And I know how they sacrificed for the Lord Jesus. I know how they loved him, and I know how they gave their life for him. I know these people. So I'm not impressed with your Christian celebrities. Not a bit. It is the power of God on you that will get the job done. Do you realize tonight that I'm sowing seed? Do you know that? I'm sowing seed right now. I'm sowing seed. I'm trying to break through the mental garbage. Garbage. That's just, you were inundated with it. I'm trying to get through this mental garbage and get to your heart. Because some of you, and I've been accused of this in the past. Well, Preacher Lawson makes me doubt my salvation. I've been accused of that more than once. Folks, I got saved in 1973. I have never had a man cause me to doubt my salvation. Amen. Not one time. Not one time. My salvation was pretty dramatic because I came out of a hell hole. I came out of a horrible background. I came from a terrible place. And my change was so drastic and so dramatic from what I was into the new creature in Christ Jesus. And I look back at it myself and I think to myself sometimes, my goodness gracious, what happened to me? No man's going to cause me to doubt my salvation. I know whom I have believed. I remember Third Creek Baptist Church I was a member down there when I got saved. And this has been now, this has been 45 years ago. I don't remember his name, but I remember when he walked the aisle at Third Creek. Bill Cardwell was the pastor down there. He walked the aisle. He got down on his knees, opened the Bible. People gathered around him, and they prayed for him. They prayed for him to be saved. He prayed to be saved. Then he prayed again to be saved. Then he prayed again to be saved. Then he prayed again to be saved. Over and over and over and over again. He could not get assurance of his salvation. He couldn't get it. And so finally he got up and in frustration he went back and sat down. He didn't have anybody telling him, well, now you prayed the sinner's prayer, you know. I was there when you prayed it. Everything's okay. You ask God to save you and he's not going to turn you away. But he knew in his heart something had not changed. So he went back and he sat down. And I remember... It was days after this initial trip to the altar that he finally stood up in church, one service, and he said, I got something I want to tell people. And if I remember, and I don't have a good memory, but he seems to me like he stood up and he said, at one o'clock this morning, I got it settled. I got it settled. I got saved. He said, I took Christ into my heart and I believed on him. And nothing's going to take that away from me. And what did we do? We gathered around him and we, we rejoiced. We praised God for what had happened to him. We didn't try to convince him that just because he prayed some sinner's prayer that everything's okay with God. It's okay to pray a sinner's prayer. We're all sinners. My little granddaughter says to, so was praying yesterday and she says, Lord, we pray for all those in need. I said to her when she finished, I'm one of them. Because <laughs> I'm in need. <laughs> Amen. I'm in need. 
If you don't have anybody else to pray for, pray for me. Because I need it. Amen. I would like to see that happen at Temple. I would like to see the seed sown. I would like to see it watered. And then I would like to see the fruit of it in due time. And God will honor his word. Amen. Down through the years, I don't know how many people have said, Preacher, I was a member of the church for 20, 30, 40 years. I went to church every Sunday, taught Sunday school, deacon, preached, did it all. But I wasn't saved. Amen. How many ever heard a testimony like that? You all have. You all have. So what made the difference? I'll tell you what made the difference. The Holy Ghost will not lie to you. He turned the light on. And he says to them, you've been kidding yourself all these years. Where can we go back to the point where your life changed, where you really changed? I'm not talking about when you started believing something. When can you go back in your life where you changed and became a new creature in Christ Jesus? And when you went home to your wife, your wife said, I got a different husband. You went home to your husband and your husband says, I got a different wife. And the son and daughter goes into the house and the parents say, we got a different son and daughter. You see, I'm giving you tonight old-fashioned preaching. This is the old-fashioned stuff. This is what people used to preach. This is the new birth. It's the new birth. Did you know tonight, here at Temple Baptist Church, the body of Christ has met? Are you in that body? I didn't say Temple Baptist Church is met. That doesn't mean a thing. You know, the people, the numbers, forget that. Are you in the body of Christ? Then the body of Christ has met on Woodrow Drive. You see what I mean? And if you are truly in the body of Christ, you'll have a love for each other. There's a communion, a sweetness, and a fellowship. And the greatest thing that we can do to have fellowship at Temple Baptist Church is to humble ourselves. James said to humble yourselves under the, under the mighty hand of God yeah. that he might lift you up. Humble yourself. That's not easy to do. No. It's easy to get up and scream and yell and stomp and, and lord it over people, you know, and act like you're the greatest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. I've been watching this guy now for about two weeks on YouTube. And I, after about two weeks of him, I said to myself, I said, people, I'd like to say this to you. You don't have to listen to that. <laughs> you know, here we, this is the Baptist way, okay? Here you are. You're sitting in here, okay? I'm up here in front of you. I'm up here talking. This is the way Baptist. But all people, all Christians don't do it that way. You realize that, don't you? It's what's called liturgy. They do it differently in different places. And I, I think sometimes, in some cases, they may have it better than we do because they don't have some one guy mm -hmm. up in front of everybody lording it over people, screaming and stomping around. I heard this guy say the other day, now, he's, he was a big fella. And uh, he was up there preaching, and, and uh, some woman back on the side like that, he, she, she didn't receive what he said. She didn't receive it. And he could tell. You know, you get to where you can read faces after a while. I can tell how many like me and how many don't like me. I can tell you who's, who's asleep. Who's asleep. <laughs> and here's what he did. This lady was sitting on that side over there. He, hey, 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 hey. If you don't like it, get up and get out now. <laughs> I'm serious. Should we have to listen to that? Is that preaching? Yeah. Is there any humility in that? The power is not in me. The power is in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saw another one on there. A crippled woman sitting in a wheelchair on this side over here. And this fellow's been gone now for 20 years almost. Hey! Calm down over there. Yeah, you! And another one. He was up there preaching. And they're sitting back there, and lo and behold, Lord help us, had a cell phone. And it rang. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you put that thing away, or I'm going to come in, I'm going to tear it up. Listen, folks, 
this stuff is on YouTube. And I've been listening to it. And I thought, people, do you go to a church like that where you got to sit and listen to that junk and you think you're being preached to? You think, that you think that's, that's not preaching. That is an arrogant, self-puffed up uh, bully screaming and yelling at people. That's not preaching. I heard a man say one time, a long time ago, he said, if you preach to people, you really preach to them. If they don't believe you care for them, you're wasting your breath. And I agree with that. And I heard a man say to 35, 40 years ago, he said, some messages you preach, if you don't cry all the way through them, you don't really know what you're preaching. In other words, not this put on cry. How many seem to put on cry? How many know what I'm talking about? Okay. When they put it on, it turns you off, right? Don't like put on cries. Don't like them. <laughs> Turn them off. <laughs> but a real cry, when he's really crying, you don't see many do that. But when you do see one do that, it gets your attention. You say, to you, what's this preacher crying about? What's he got his heart into? And you know what's going on? You're seeing humility. You're seeing somebody cares. Somebody that really cares. I'd like to see sweetness at temple. I don't people, and they tell me all the time, they say, preacher, the minute I walk through that door right there, they say, I felt something in here. They feel, they feel something in here. Well, you know what they feel? They feel the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. They don't feel me. I have, I have no choice. It's, I can't get up and preach to you without getting up here. You see what I mean? Yeah. How am I going to do it? <laughs> have a recording and get over here, turn it on and go over there and sit down and listen to myself. You know, you don't see anybody. I can't do that. But I am aware tonight of this. I can become the object and I can become the center and I can become far too important far more important than I really am. And I've got to guard against that and be very, very careful with that because I want to see people saved. Amen. Amen. I want to see people saved. How many of you know what conviction feels like? See, that's a loaded question <laughs> because if you don't know what conviction feels like, you're not saved. <laughs> well, I've told you how I felt when I was convicted. Lord have mercy, man. I, you know that. I didn't ask for that. That just came out of the clear blue. But man, I, I had a, I had, I, it's like a weight coming down on my soul. I, I did. I felt like I was going to die and I felt like I was going to hell. And it was a horrible feeling, terrible feeling, horrible Bill Cardwell was preaching revival. Bill used to go out and preach here, and then Bill's a good preacher. Bill Cardwell, pastor of Third Creek. He's gone now. He's gone on to be with the Lord. He's a good man. But he was preaching revival while I was under conviction. We tried to find him. Couldn't find him. So we went to Sandra and John's house, and I've told you before what happened. We called one of the deacons. Deacon came over, opened the Bible, sat down next to me. I was just a simple thing, simple thing, but I was ready. <laughs> I was ready. We really didn't need the deacon, I don't really think, but... We did, we did anyway. I was ready. I was ready. And all it took was a simple prayer. Just a simple prayer. Lord, have mercy on my soul. And when I raised my head, it was all gone. <laughs> that burden was gone. That dread was gone. It's just, I just, I wanted to get up and say, hallelujah. Yeah. Just gone. Right. Just like that. That's the new birth. Yeah. That's the new birth. That's the new birth. Repent? Well, you never heard the lack of repenting in your life coming out of me. And the reason it did is because I knew I was no down, low down sorry. And I was coming to him to save my soul. Amen. I, when I got saved, I didn't say, Lord, forgive me for this and forgive me for that and forgive me for this and forgive me for that and forgive me for that. No, I, when I got saved, I said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Save my soul. That's what I, what I did. But my heart was ready to repent of everything the Holy Spirit pointed out. And I'm telling you something, it took a while to get it all out. 
I had a pile of stuff to repent for. 30, uh, uh, 27 years of living like the devil. And God saved me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Matthew 21, 5, tell ye the daughter of Sion, behold, the king cometh unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass, a colt, a colt, the foal of an ass. Who? Meek and sitting. Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Don't you think that's something? The king of the universe, the king of glory, yeah. meek, meek, and the Bible said in weakness. He was sacrificed him. He gave himself meek and lowly in heart. Folks, let me tell you tonight. Pride will do you in. It will destroy you. It will destroy you. And pride is the most deceptive of all the sins. It is. It is deceptive. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. John 15, 5. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Matthew 5, 36. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. We are helpless. We are completely helpless. Well, I'm an organizer. I'm this. I'm that. That's nothing. They organize at CBS, NBC, and ABC. The best planners in the world, secular world. But they don't get the work of God done. God's work done God's way. God's work done God's way will always bear fruit. Amen. May God bless tonight. May he anoint his word. May you receive what I've said. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Yes. If in your heart you sincerely desire a closer walk with God, he said, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto thee. Amen. Amen. I hope you do. I hope you do. And the truth of the matter is, it's been my experience for the years that I've been saved that you've got to stay at it every day. You might be walking close to God and shouting from the housetops yesterday and then get up today and the devil's got to, he's going to slip you something. Yeah, he's got a new tactic. Hey, Amen. He's going to get all over you. He said, I'll show you, big boy. <laughs> and wear you out. What do you do? You get back on your knees and say, Lord, I need victory today. Yesterday's victory's not, it won't work. I need today's victory. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your holy word. Thank you for the opportunity to stand tonight and witness and testify of, my, of the saving grace of my Lord Jesus Christ. Bless his righteous name forever. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's not about the ministry. It's not about the movement. It's not about the denomination. It's not about our accomplishments. It's not about who we are. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Always has been. Yes. Always will be. In thy holy name. And heads are bowed tonight. Nobody looking out like to say something that will help you. Would you raise your hand and say, Preach, I want you to pray for me because I need that. I need that prayer. God bless you. God bless you. You need victory today. Yesterday's victory won't work today. You need today's victory. God bless you. Amen. God bless every one of you. I'm right there with you. I need today's victory. Yeah. Not yesterday's. Today. I need today's victory with the Lord to walk in, walk in newness of life and spirit and the power of God. Amen. That's what we need. Father, you saw all the hands that went up tonight. Bless every one of them. Bless all of them, Father. Pour your Holy Spirit out upon all the believers in this house tonight. Bless them, Father, and fill them with the Holy Ghost. God, today, today's victory, today walking close to thee, Lord, in what we need. And then that in the house tonight, one sitting in this midst that do not, they don't know you, I pray for their soul. I pray the light will come to them. I pray they'll see who they really are and what they really are. And I pray in due time, Heavenly Father, that you'd save their soul. Show them their lost condition. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, folks. Amen.